We have this preconception that animals feed on other organisms while plants peacefully do photosynthesis. Animals move while plants are immobile. That may well be the case in the macroscopic world. At the microscopic level, this distinction between plants and animals collapses almost entirely. Euglena is both plant and animal. Euglena is mixotrophic. When magnified a few hundred times, Euglena mostly appears as a cigar-shaped, almost worm-like microscopic creature. Although its appearance may vary among its roughly 900 species. Euglena is able to use sunlight as its energy source, just like a plant, while it is also able to feed on organic matter and in some cases even to hunt prey. Euglena actively pursues the sunlight with a primitive eye and a motor called a flagellum, similar to the long tail sperm cells use for locomotion. What makes Euglena's flagellum special is its positioning and its sometimes extreme fluctuations in length. To the contrary of what you might expect, the flagellum is not attached to the tail end of the cell, but it is attached to the head performing a pulling motion. Some Euglena species have extremely short flagella, which are almost useless, while others have flagella so long they are more hindrance than help. Euglena can dispose of its flagellum and rely also on another form of locomotion called metaboly, which allows them to slither and glide like a worm. This is made possible by the flexible cell. Euglena has no cell wall and instead is covered in a thin, malleable sheath with a distinct surface structure. Considering these features, it is no wonder that Anthony Leuvenhoek described Euglenas as green worms when he first discovered this microscopic wonder during the late 17th century. But Euglena is all about the eye. Ehrenberg, a naturalist of the 19th century, decided that the eye should be the name-giving feature of Euglena, which is Greek for beautiful eye. This ominous eye is a distinct red spot, giving Euglena the appearance of a little angry dragon. The red eye spot is not light sensitive, on the contrary, it blocks light. The light sensitive structures are beneath and around it, allowing Euglena to determine the exact angle of incidence by the shadow the spot casts on the light sensitive molecules. So how did Euglena acquire the characteristics of both plants and animals? It all seems to have started with a creature similar to this one, Piranima. This creature shares many common features with Euglena, but is exclusively predatory. One fine day, a creature just like Piranima must have swallowed a photosynthetic green alga. Unfortunately, this creature suffered from severe indigestion, a blessing in disguise. As a consequence, the chloroplasts, the cell organelles responsible for photosynthesis of this green alga, survived and were able to reproduce within its new host and eventually assimilate to Piranema to become Euglena. Throughout the course of evolution, these incidents of indigestion on cellular level are more frequent than you might think. Algae and plants also acquired the chloroplasts the same way from cyanobacteria. And this is also how we animals acquired our mitochondria, the energy factories in our cells that allow us to live. On a cellular level, indigestion 
is indisputably driving evolution forward. Euglena stores harvested energy in paramyelin granules, a type of starch. These structures are very prominent in Euglena, taking up most space within the cell. Granule shapes vary from species to species. In Euglena gracilis, for example, they are rod-shaped, while in Euglena sanguinea, they resemble discs. This extreme density in carbohydrates and other complex organic molecules makes Euglena an interesting candidate for the production of biofuels and as a potential food source of the near future. Let's take a closer look at Euglena's fascinating behavior. As an example, we will use Euglena sanguinea, the blood Euglena. It definitely is not hard to guess where this name came from. Its dark red color is striking. Euglena sanguinea's reddish tint is caused by a huge lump of keratinoids in its cell. This is how millions of blood euglenas look to the naked eye. Stunning! The sunlight causes them to swim to the surface, where they form a dense layer drifting on the surface. The cells ball up into perfect little spheres and secrete a gooey, gelatinous substance, perfectly transparent to light, preventing them from drying out and serving as a matrix for communication and perhaps even for the exchange of nutrients. The cells drift on top of the surface like a raft. This is how they maximize exposure to sunlight and at the same time gaining easy access to CO2 and other gases in the atmosphere. In these conditions, their photosynthesis is going full throttle, causing the gelatinous matrix to bubble up with oxygen. And here comes a little surprise. Euglena sanguinea have an integrated sunscreen. One might even call it a biological aperture. The big lump of carotene in the center of their cell is in fact a complex organ that can be contracted or expanded at will, essentially like a chromatophore, like those found in the skin of squids, allowing rapid changes in color. When light exposure is intense, blood euglenas expand their chromatophore, blocking harmful UV light. This expansion gives them a red appearance. When light exposure is low, they contract their chromatophore, allowing more light to reach the chloroplasts, causing their tint to change into green. A time-lapse video of the surface of the pond demonstrates this effect very impressively. Direct sunlight colors them blood red, while shade tints them green. In this footage, you can see the expansion of the chromatophore happening under the microscope as they try to protect themselves from the intense light of the microscope illumination. When the layer of cells drifting on the pond's surface is disturbed by mechanical stimuli like rain or splashing, the cells start to dissolve the matrix, shifting back into euglena form and start to swim into the gloomy depth of the pond, where they are waiting for the return to the surface. What fascinating creatures they are. Thank you very much for watching. Let's dig up some more dirt and see you the next time. Bye bye. Please listen carefully.